speaker was out. Right. And why you said you had told others uh, about your sexual relationship. Do you remember who you told? Yes, the first person I told was um, a mutual friend, Aaron. What's his name? Okay. And why did you, well, prior to this, you told us about some comments you had made to Rachel about sexual activity that you minimized. Do you recall telling us about that? Yes. And then, um, well, when you spoke with Aaron, did you also minimize the behavior? No, Aaron wasn't, um, he was a church member, but he wasn't living the standards of the church, so I assumed that by sharing this with him, he wouldn't judge me, um, that maybe he was in a similar boat, so to speak, and I also was still seeking advice, and I was still hesitant to go to my bishop based on the discussion I had with Travis about that. But once he had passed, then you felt more comfortable? Is that what you're telling us? Talking about these things? I, yeah, I would have never talked to Aaron about that. If, you know, I didn't want anyone to know about that. But he wouldn't judge me, is what was my thought. Okay. Did you interview with any other media outlets besides uh, CBS? Um, yes, I did. And don't have to know the parent company or anything else, but do you remember who that was or what show that was for? The show was Inside Edition. Okay. And were you contacted by them or did you contact them? Um, they, they contacted me, I guess you could say. I certainly didn't contact them. Okay. Indirectly, they contacted me. What do you mean indirectly? Um, I was just hanging out one day in the housing unit in the jail, and an officer came with two shirts saying, which one do you want to wear? Inside Edition's here, and they want to talk to you. And my attorney at that point had advised me not to do that because it could... Um, I want to check as So after the officer gives you the shirt and you say you go, what happens after the officer gives you the shirt? Well, she didn't give me the shirt right away because I didn't want to do it at first, but I was encouraged to. Um, I was encouraged to because I'm just trying to think how to word it. I'm sorry. Okay, well, let me ask you this. Did the officer encourage you to speak with them? Yes, she did. And we're ultimately talking about a law enforcement officer, correct? Sheriff? Uh, she worked for the Sheriff's Department. She was an officer. Okay. So, when you describe the situation with Mr. Leach, um, it appeared he came and met you and talked to you about why you should interview before there were any cameras. Is that accurate? Yes. The gentleman from Inside Edition, do you remember his name? Um, I think his last name was Boyd. I don't remember okay. his first name. Well, okay, we'll just, um, the, the reporter for Inside Edition, did he uh, come meet you and without cameras and try to discuss whether or not you should 
participate in an interview with his television program? No, it was just from him. Okay. So the videotaped recorded interview you saw was the first contact that we saw earlier was the first contact you had with Inside Edition? Yeah, the first and only. Okay. Now, when we began your testimony some days ago, uh, we talked about a quote you had said, and I, I'm paraphrasing a bit, that uh, no jury would ever convict you. You recall that? Right. Um, and earlier you described those as being the bitterest words you'll ever have to eat when we began this testimony. Do you recall that? Yes. Okay. Let me first ask you this comment, no jury would convict you. Why did you say that? Well, you can't convict a dead person, and I wanted, I planned to be dead long before this ever even got close to trial. That was my hope. Why did you choose those particular words? Well, I didn't, I didn't watch very much TV um, prior to being arrested. And then after I was arrested, it was on all the time in the same room where I lived. And so there was a TV program on that everyone was watching. Um, and a lawyer on there said, was talking about a case that they were trying to get somebody indicted. And the prosecutor said, no jury will convict. And I, the way she had said it was very powerful and it impacted me. And it just stuck in my head. So by this time, by this time, I, had, I think I'd already done the CBS interview. I was uh, similarly confident in that interview that there wouldn't be a conviction. I didn't tell her why, obviously. And then, um, so by the time this interview came along, it, it came out more, I thought, more eloquently and more forcefully and more assuredly. But I, I obviously couldn't say why because the officer that had escorted me to that interview, the one that encouraged me to do it, um, would have escorted me elsewhere afterward. Okay. Now, at this point in time, since your, maybe since even since Mr. Alexander's death was discovered, you told one version of events in which you weren't there. And another version of events where intruders came into the home, killed Mr. Alexander, and you escaped. Why did you then now decide to tell us what really happened. Objection vouching, what really happened? Telling us something. Thank you, rephrase. Why, Why did you decide to come forward? All these things that you've been hiding. Mr. Alexander's sexual interests. The sexual relationship. The violence. Why did you feel comfortable coming forth with that information? Objection. Uh, indicating that she was hiding this assumes facts not in evidence. We started the question by saying that you... Overruled. you may answer the question. It wasn't an overnight decision by any means. Um, from day one, there was a part of me that always wanted to, but didn't dare do that. Um, I would rather have gone to my grave not 
without confirming that I could have done something like that. I was extremely ashamed of it. It wasn't in line with who I was or how I had been living my life all the way up to that point. So as the years went by, however, I began to, it feels very fraudulent from day one, especially when there are so many nice people reaching out to you and they believe you or they believe in you. It just feels, it doesn't feel right. It feels fraudulent, it feels wrong. Um, my family also remained very supportive and told me that it doesn't matter what happens, we love you anyway. And I realized at that point that even if I told the truth, that they would still be there and they wouldn't walk away. So it was around, it, was, it, was an, it evolved, it was a, a process that happened over a long period of time, but by the time the spring 2010 rolled around, I confessed. You what? Confessed. When you say confessed, what do you mean by confessed? I basically um, told everyone what what I could remember of the day and that the intruder story was all BS, pretty much. That's all the questions I have, Judge. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to ask that you go back to the jury room. We will be with you shortly. The record will show the jury has left the courtroom. Please be seated. Ms. Aries, you may step down. For those of you seated in the back of the courtroom, we are going to be handling a matter in a closed proceeding for the rest of the day. Court will convene again tomorrow morning at 1030. We are in recess. Counsel, I will see you in chamber.